ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Auto Auction Rebuilds. We are back and we got a special guest with us today. Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> Michael from Santa's Workshop. How you doing, sir? Uh, I'm tired. Yeah. I don't want to be here. Well, yeah, you do. Good company, though. Well, yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> How you feeling today? I'm actually pretty good. It's, yeah? it's not scorching yet. Yet, yet it will. It's... <laughs> That's coming. It's, it's very, coming. <laughs> very soon. It's going to be what, 104, 105 today, I think? Yeah. Yeah. So we're, I, I got up at, uh, gosh, I don't know, 5 30 this right. morning, went to bed at 3. Oh. So uh, I have no idea how you do that. I'm running out of whatever it is that makes a person capable <laughs> of doing that. I'm, I'm about done. <laughs> you know what's cool, though, is for the first time, we have the Grand Wagoneer, and it's got a trailer behind it. And honestly, it looks good. <laughs> well, the color matches. It does. The color, this gray color of the trailer matches the gray color. Of, I mean, it, it, it looks like it was meant for this. And so far, it's pulled the trailer. Oh, yeah. Like, you, I forget it's there. Yeah, that, that's the dangerous thing about it. <laughs> Changing lanes. Oops, I forgot I <laughs> forgot I had a trailer behind me. Um, so this means since we have the trailer hooked up, we must be picking something up today. Yes, we are. And I, I love trying to drag it out and pretend like we don't know what we're getting. Yeah, yeah, it's just, the thumbnail is going to be there and the title. Yeah. You know, okay, it's a 1925 Ford Model T, which I think was one of the last years that they made the Model T before they started production on the Model A. Don't get me to lying about that. Yeah, that's, I don't. That's a little bit before my time. Well, I was around back then, and I'm here to tell you. <laughs> no, uh, <laughs> I, I do think this is probably one of the very last of the of the Model Ts that were produced, and it's being sold to us as a le it is a legitimate barn find. Right. I found this. It is in a barn, and it is nasty. It's covered in dirt and dust because it has been parked for at least ten years. Oh, man. The lady selling it, her husband has owned it since, like, 1955. Wow. So it doesn't run, obviously. We may need to use the winch today. We are going to go pick it up, and hopefully we can get a story from these people. Maybe they can tell us a little more about it, a little more about its history since they've owned it for, I don't know, 60 years? Well, I'll tell you what, the pictures you show me, are it's just amazing. Yeah, other it's... than needing the filth cleaned off of it, I think this is going to be a fun project. Yeah. All right. We're only about 10 minutes away. What do you say we go get us a Model T? Let's get it. Let's do it. All right. Here's the here's the oh, big reveal here. There you are, guys. Look at that. Oh, it's even got a brake light and a spare tire. The spare tire is good. Too. Look at that. Wow. So it's been sitting, you said, about 10 years? Yeah. They moved up here about 10 years ago. It had been... Um, at my great grandpa's house, and then it was at our house. We built like a little lean to on the side yeah, of the, yeah. what granddad called the gin house. We didn't okay. make gin, but. Uh, and then they moved the it office. up here. The gin house was the office for the cotton gin. Kind of thing. Okay. Oh, okay. Well, that makes sense. <laughs> and then they moved it up here because granddaddy was not going to let it go. Yeah. And here it sits. Unbelievable. This is going to be the lightest vehicle I have ever towed. But, uh, I'm There's... sure it will. <laughs> we this got the trailer is... over there. It's uh, no, I don't think it'll be a problem hauling this thing. No, I've got wow. a brick, and there is a. I just noticed there's a battery. Um, okay, so then we were going to. Oh, what is a that? Of, they're extra batteries. For Those the are car. batteries. Yeah. yeah. Oh we wow! Don't know if they're good or not, but, but th that's are. batteries. Those they're batteries. wooden case batteries. Wooden batteries. And then. Here's the jack. <laughs> oh, wow. How, uh, yeah, yeah. Wow. And then up here we have some of the parade paraphernalia. Okay. So you've got like the big ones that were like here. No, they go up, up, they, on, all the way up. If you look on top of the... Oh, there. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. There okay. You go. They go right So we got there. two of those and then we have this one, if I can fish it over here. Uh, goes up on the very front. On the oh, radiator. okay, on the okay. And there's another flag here, so it's a full. Oh wow! Set. Oh, that's cool. So we thought we'd let y'all, you know, to see what I'm, I'm. Like I said, I'm pretty sure that's been Spray, replaced. Yeah. 
But it's got the keys. It's got the plaques from when it was um, doing stuff. Back in the back, back in the seventies. Yeah. Look then, at this. And this used to be a pickup truck. Yes. Yes. It used to be a pickup. It used to be a pickup truck that they converted back into a. Uh, I think they call them a runabout. I'm not, May, I, I, we I can't. called it a touring. A touring car. car. Okay. I don't know if that's what the okay. real name is. But there Other, are a couple of things up under the edge. I oh, have look noticed. At this. Yeah, that's for your um, this gas. Part. Gas can hole. Really? I'm like just a little square. There's no. Okay. Uh, there's, there's no way to get in on the driver's right. side here. Right. Okay. You have to get in, but there's the little. Right. These will open if I pull it the wrong way. So that's how you get into the back seat. The other side's the same, and then you get in through the passenger through the side. Through the passenger the side. Well, I guess we'll hook a winch to this thing. That would be the and, best thing. Uh, this one is a very flat tire, so I don't know how it's going to act. But I think the other ones are all. Enough air to up. roll. Yeah. I forgot my air pump. I, I, I brought everything else. I forgot my air pump. Go. All right. Michael's going to try to pull this thing out. I forgot the trigger for the winch because I was in such a hurry. He's going to go real slow. Real slow. Here she comes. Hopefully it'll move. Come on, old girl. Uh, she's not moving. There she goes. There she goes. There she goes. You're good. I think it's actually going to pull right out. Okay. Yeah. Hold on one second. Oh. Oh my goodness, <laughs> no power steering. Oh, you know what? It's cranking the engine. <laughs> it's going backwards. I told you that's how they raced them. Yeah, the engine is, uh, you can see it's not seen. the engine is spinning. So I'm guessing it is not in, it's not in neutral. Wow, look at her. How are we doing on that last pull over there? Looks good. It looks good. Turn it just a hair. Wow. Okay, hold on. Hold on. Straighten it back out a little bit. I wish I knew how to find neutral. <laughs> but I don't think it's going to start, so... probably something in the... All right, go ahead. Yeah. Well, there's a heel button also, and I'm not sure exactly what the heel button does. If it's the lights. Okay, hold on. And then it does have like it's really original, original 1925 license plate. License plate wow. on the front. All right, stop. This thing is fun. You just <laughs> I gotta keep turning it different directions. So. uh Steering is a lot of fun. Well, I, I, I can see how you rode it completely yeah. off of the <laughs> yeah, track. Yeah. Well, one, it seems like one wheel goes one way, another is going another way. Hmm. It's a, uh, this sucker's hard to move, real hard. And it's in gear, so the engine ah. is spinning. You can hear it going choo, 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 as you, as you roll it backwards. But, well, the wheels are going the same way. Yeah. God, isn't that thing beautiful? It is. I mean, it, it really it, is. It's legitimately been garage since the early 60s, in one garage or another. Wow. So. It's just amazing to see something so original. <laughs> you know, they uh, Henry Ford said you could have these in any color you wanted as long as it was black. Did you yeah. know that is actually not true? No. They, Come on They now. did other colors as well. Did they? Yep. Right. But do you know how they did the paint job on these? Paintbrush? Paintbrush, sanded it down with pumice, pumice. And then, oh wow, by hand, and then polished it out. No kidding. Yeah. Paintbrushed, huh? <laughs> this thing is, this is so amazing. This is so amazing. All right, guys, 
Uh, I'm not going to bore you with getting it loaded up on the trailer. That's that's going to be uh, that's going to be a chore, and we're going to need all hands on deck for that. But we'll come back when we get her on the trailer, and then we'll head back to AR headquarters where we can see if we might be able to get this thing to fire up today. So we made it back to AR headquarters. Yes, yes unscathed. We did. That it's in perfect condition, just like it was when we picked it up. Actually, when we made it back here, it was, and it is still in perfect condition because I did not run it into the damn tree and bend the frame and smash the windshield. Right? It was in perfect condition when we hit the property. Okay. In other words, what he's trying to say is, you see these uh, tree limbs all over the car? You see the shards of broken glass down there? Those are shards of someone's shattered dreams. Yeah. Mine. Right now. Because what happened, there's even some leaves. Looky there. <laughs> yeah, well, this tree limb here, or these tree limbs, hang pretty damn low. And I pull under them all the time because it's shady. Never had a problem in my life. What I didn't think of is that we have a car, technically a truck, it was a truck, on a trailer with a really tall window frame. So Michael came over here. We actually bent this frame. It was bent pretty damn good. Yeah, it, it, was, it was a good 45. Yeah. So you've done an amazing job with no tools. Right. Just his brute strength. <laughs> he managed to straighten it mostly. There's still a little hammering we got to do to tweak it, but I think the frame's going to be okay. Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll make it work. Nothing here or here was damaged. No. Thank God. Uh, however, the glass, that's nah, done. That glass is absolutely done. So now I get the pleasure of replacing the glass. And, uh, well, you can see where the tree limbs hit it up here too. Yep. And here. Yeah. We get to replace the glass and I'll most likely have to find seals whatever those are. Actually, I don't think there's any seal in that. Oh, no? Okay. No. Okay. If there is, it's just a, a very thin glue cloth or? type stuff okay. to keep it from the vibration from rattling it. Okay. Well, needless to say, I am, uh, and, and, and like, I'm actually upset with myself over it. Like, I, I, my, it actually hurt my feelings pretty bad to see a car that's 100 year, almost 100 years old that survived this long right. until I got my hands on it and drove it into a tree. Well, that's that's another reason never to leave the barn. <laughs> Just leave them in. <laughs> barn finds should be barn. At least leave them <laughs> in the barn. Don't ever take them out. That's solid advice. <sighs> um, we have the uh, the task now. God, this is a beautiful... I, I, there's something about just looking at this buggy with its big bug headlights. Mm -hmm. it, <laughs> it's original license plate from 1925. Can you believe that? Wow. The wheels are actually wood. Yes. They're wood. <laughs> this thing's got a woody. <laughs> Four of them. <laughs> I'm jealous. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's get this thing over to the, uh, to the shop over there. And uh, I guess we'll get it rolled in. And then we get to figure out if maybe, maybe possibly, hell, it might actually be able to fire up today. Possible. It doesn't need anything as long as the coils work. Right. If you make, put gas in it, it will run. Make sure it's got oil in it. Oil. Do you know how to check the oil in one of these? Not yet. <laughs> it's like a tractor from the olden days. Oh, yay. There is no dipstick. <laughs> you have to go under it and there are two plugs and you got to make sure the oil is between the two. I'm going to say I'm I think it's got oil. Oh, I'm sure it does. Okay. See, it's got oil. So we're going to do the right thing and we're just going to throw some starting fluid in it and crank it, right? Maybe not. We might check the oil. Well, let's check the oil. Let's check the oil. <laughs> Fine. Okay. <laughs> we'll meet you guys in the shop. You're a what? A bystander. A bystander. A <laughs> not, battery getter outer. Not anymore. Yeah, you got that battery out. This whole time he's been telling me I should be filming. You should be filming because I do YouTube. Duh. I should be filming, <laughs> but <Well. laughs> I didn't film, but that's okay because we really haven't accomplished anything. Okay, we, we accomplished we, we accomplished a couple things. So the clutch was not working <laughs> at all. Um, the brakes were not working at all. It, the, the brakes still don't work, but I did fix the clutch. I did with a hammer and some WD-40. Well, at least bailing wire wasn't involved. Yes, bailing wire was not involved. They this, saw that for the tailpipe. This time. And we're looking at the carburetor trying to figure out, like, how does this thing even work? Uh, I have no idea. So, from what I can tell... Come on now. This is the exhaust, and it runs straight back. 
This tiny little thing is the intake. There's your carburetor, which looks like it siphons air from right at the hot exhaust. Very strange, but I'm assuming that's how this works. Little bitty carburetor down there. This is your lean, rich mixture. We've got that loose. It's working. This, I think, is your accelerator. I think that's faster and slower. This is a valve to open and close your fuel line since it's gravity fed. This right here, I don't know what this is. If somebody knows what this is, tell me. We are assuming it's some kind of a generator. It, it, it's, I, I believe that's a generator because it's got to create some sort of electric electricity to fire the coils. Right. So that, and it, this one does not have a water pump. We, we were discussing that earlier. Right. Um, some of these came with water pumps and some of them did not. The one that Vice Grip Garage just drove like 600 miles. Oh, wow. Uh, his was not a Model T though, it was a Model A. There's a bit of a difference between right. them, but I think mechanically they're mostly the same. His did have a water pump, which is probably why it made it. <laughs> I, don't, <laughs> I don't know how it would have done without a water pump, but this one, you look right here and on Vice Grip Garage's video, there would have been a water pump sticking out right here, and this one is not. It just goes from the crank straight to the fan, and honestly, it's not, the fan's not, the belt is not particularly tight. We believe this to be the horn. Here are your plug wires, which, as you can see, look, well, they've seen better days. These go to your coils, which I believe those are mounted inside the car right here. Yeah. So those are the coils. Hopefully they're good. We don't really know. Uh, over here is your throttle. This is how you go fast and slow. So when you go to start up for the first time, you want it relatively low. And then you got to remember that you have to manually control timing as well. So your timing is over here and you want it all the way up when you're going to first start it up. And then once you get it running, you need to bring it down till the engine smooths out and that's where you leave it. So you adjust your timing here. You adjust your throttle here. The e-brake uh, is for starting it all the way on, holds down your brake pedal, and it engages or disengages the clutch. Unfortunately, the brakes do not work on this. Um, so that's something we will have to figure out. This right here is for a gas can um, to haul extra gas. And over here is where the six volt battery goes. There's a lot in this. There's really, there's a lot to this. All the tires are aired up and we got some great stories from the people that sold it to us. Oh yeah. It was sold uh, 67 years ago. Mm -hmm. The lady that sold it to us, it belonged to her dad and he bought it while she was being born in the hospital. Yep. And her mom was pissed. Was not happy. Yeah, she, uh, she said her mom was very upset that he went out and bought this while she was in, you know, I don't know if she's in the hospital. She may have had the baby at home. A lot of people had home birthings, home right. birthings back then. So, uh, but yeah, she said her mom was very upset that, uh, that he went out and bought a new car while she was uh, being born. Actually, it was a pickup. Oh, it was a pickup. That's right. That's he right. Bought, he bought it as a pickup, converted it to a car. Yep. These were notorious for uh, pickup beds. Mm-hmm pickup beds and that's where the term a, a a pickup bed comes from because you were able to take one of these and convert it to a truck you were able to put a truck bed in it right so yeah this can easily be converted from a i think they call it a runabout or something as it is and it can be converted over to a truck or you can convert it from a truck back to a runabout whatever the case may be this is a it's a little rough <laughs> <laughs> it's a little rough. There's it's a little rougher now that I bought it. There's some WD-40 for that squeak. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm going to tell you guys right now, I paid $5,500 for this, and I will be the first to admit I overpaid. I bought it sight unseen. From the pictures I saw, it looked pretty decent, but it was sitting in a barn where it had been sitting for 10 years, at least 10 years. Right. Um, Grandpa dad passed away and it's just kind of been sitting ever since so our job is to try to get it running um i think honestly even if this thing had new tires and new tubes and it was running perfectly the body's in pretty rough shape it's pretty rough i i, I think you might be able to get five thousand or so on a good day 
and now I've got a windshield to replace as well. So I'll never, I'll never see my money back from this. I don't think. Well, the windshield won't be too awful bad. Yeah. Either way, I still think it's a fun project. I think it'll be interesting to try to get back together. I want to open the gas tank with you guys. Um, 10 years, I'm hoping the gas was drained, but I'm gonna bet probably not. Um, we've got a lot of cool stuff back here. Like, I mean, seriously, look at these spark plugs. These old sparkulators. You got all kinds of, I don't know what all of this stuff goes to, but there's lots of, lots of this. You found some tools back here too. Mm -hmm. See if I can climb in this door here and look at that little hammer, this little screwdriver, a little, look at like this little bitty hammer. Okay. Ford, Ford wrenches. Ford wrenches. I mean, legitimate. Ford wrenches. Can you believe that? Look at those. And that's a Ford wrench. What is that for? I imagine that's some sort of adjustment somewhere. Ooh, if anybody knows what any of this stuff is, definitely drop a comment below. This is a <coughs> Ford M40 17017. I wonder if this is like for grabbing onto the clutch or something like, let go. And that's for the lug nuts, maybe you think? Well, it's got three different sizes of socket on it. Interesting, a T-handle with three different sockets. A multi-tool, probably the world's first multi-tool ever for a car. Oh, wow, yeah, look at this. Careful it's still got a spark plug in it. Look at that. Would you look at that? Look at that. <laughs> wow. She's full of goodies. Let's uh, crack open the fuel tank real quick. Let's see what we're working with. I already know what it's gonna be. It's gonna have gas in it, probably a full tank, and it's probably gonna be completely... Well, it, it's 10 year old gas, it may be decent. <laughs> That's true. That's a good point. That's a good point. I see, I forget the gas used to be good, and it's not anymore. Oh my. Nope, that's not gonna happen. Monkey yeah, wrench job. Mike. Gotcha. <laughs> I got you back. All right. Oh, this is gonna, this is gonna be impossible to do one handed. Come on. Okay, here. can you hold the camera? Okay. Let me get this light out of the way here. All right, here we go. That wasn't too bad. Oh, good lord. They didn't screw around with the gas cap back day, did they? Absolutely not. That's what you call Ooh. theft of do. That's, uh -oh. that's uh, nasty. Yeah, that's, uh, that's not a good sign. Okay, let's see if we can... Oh, wow. Woo. <clears throat> oh, wow. Oh. Well, I don't think I can get them. I don't think I can get you guys in there. Hello? Yeah. Let's try this one. I got a, I got another light here. Let's see if we can. There we go. That's perfect. Ooh. Honestly, it's not bad. It doesn't look like it's got much gas in it anyway. It's mostly empty. That's not too bad. I don't think these had fuel filters back in the day either. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure there were no fuel filters. Ooh, okay. Well... That gas is absolutely rotten, so that's not gonna work. I don't know how the hell to work on that carburetor. Um, and we've already tried to open the valve going to the carburetor to gravity feed fuel, and that does not work. It is frozen as well. So we're gonna stop right here for a minute, do some thinking. We did find a six volt battery down at O'Reilly's. I think maybe we'll try to go pick that up. And uh, hell, maybe just spray some starting fluid on the exhaust and crank it and see if See if it tries to fire. It could work. It could. It could. It Is could. that? I think you're right. Michael said that he thinks that it sucks air from the hot. Yeah. Um, <laughs> That's a little scary. We could shoot some starting fluid down there. I mean, even, even some more modern day, back in the 60s, they had the uh, hose going from the breather down to the exhaust manifold. Yeah. And 
I know there's a reason for it. It's escaping me right now. If people are going to crucify me on that, I know. But um, there is a reason for it. So that's probably the best way for this to be. Okay. All right. We'll be back. All right. Before, before I go grab a battery, I had to show you guys this. I was curious what's running through this. Take a look. Wow. It's orange. Like the color orange that you're seeing on video, that is legit the color of what's coming out of this. Wow. Looks like Dex cool antifreeze. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna get all this out, put some fresh in, and then we're gonna try to flush it out of the tank through the fuel line and uh, back into another bucket. Well, guys, it is it is late. I have been up since <laughs> five thirty in the morning. I was on the road by six ten. And here it is, 8.30 at night, and I'm still going. I've got the new battery installed that I was able to find at O'Reilly Auto Parts, which is awesome. Um, I cannot get fuel to come out of the tank, so it looks like most likely, as much as I don't want to, um, the tank is probably going to have to be drained. I imagine the carburetor is probably going to have to be torn apart as well. Uh, I was really hoping to get this thing running in this video. I just don't, I don't think it's going to happen, but gonna give it a try now that we've got a battery in it hopefully we can we can crank it with the starter instead of trying to crank it from the hand crank there that wasn't getting me anywhere uh, Michael says he thinks that you shoot this in here but I'm afraid to do that because this is the exhaust if it runs good lord that could be you know what before I do that shouldn't I put wheel chocks shouldn't I put the wheel chocks under it yeah, yeah, we should probably put wheel chocks under it just to be safe. So let's go ahead and do that so that hopefully she doesn't try to move on us if it does try to pop off. Um, I don't think it's going to, guys. Uh, it's been sitting a long time. Chances are the coils are going to need work. Uh, well, that's the only one I've got. I don't know where the other one is. Let's shut this off because we don't need all that drama. And this is this is all she's got, man. I gotta go home. I'm exhausted. Okay. Watch that glass, cause she'll get you. Oh, good lord. <sighs> All right, crank this on the battery and no, doesn't look like it does it. No. Well, darn. I was really hoping. Another thing that's concerning, I don't hear these coil boxes down here going off. Uh, from the YouTube videos I watch, they're supposed to make a buzzing noise. And if they're not buzzing, they call it a buzz box. If it's not buzzing, then they ain't working. So, <sighs> dang. No. Well, I don't think that's supposed to turn without the key. So we've got magneto over here, battery over here, and I'm pretty sure, uh-oh, oh no. What just happened? <laughs> this is a key, we figured out, this is a key to that uh, coil box down there. Yeah, I shouldn't have taken that out because now, there she goes, there she goes. Yeah, she's not doing nothing. I'll tell you what, guys. I'm going to mess with it for a couple more minutes. See if I can get it to do something different. Well, I haven't got the buzz box to work. <laughs> but check this horn out. 
<laughs> Aruga! Come on. Ah! Oh. Come on! Wow! <laughs> that sounds wild, doesn't it? Okay, enough playing. Let me get back to work. Guys, I'm gonna give it one more try. I've tried hooking a hose directly. This is a gravity feed system anyway. So I've hooked a hose and I just put some starting fluid down the hose, hoping that maybe it'll suck some up. Uh, and I'm also gonna spray it. Last chance, man. I, for tonight. I was really hoping to get her running in this video, guys, but I just don't think she's, uh, don't think she's game. Whoa, come on. Come on, come on, come on. Oh, oh man. Come on. No. She's... Ooh, woo, who should smell that? Oh my God. <laughs> it ran. <laughs> it ran. Ooh, she's getting warm. Wow, well, we're gonna have to be very careful now because now she's getting warm. I don't think that carburetor's doing anything. Um, let me see what I can figure out, guys. I, I would love to get her running. I'd love to hear it just pop off one more time. Well, unfortunately, as I started filling up this hose, gas, uh, carb cleaner and starting fluid has started leaking out of it. Let's see if I can show you this. It'll just start pouring right there. I mean, it's just pouring. So that ain't good. Try it anyway. To hell with it, man. Come on. Come on. She's trying. All right, let's give her a rest. Ah, all right. <laughs> I'm gonna kill the battery. I'm gonna burn up that starter if I don't quit. Dang it, I just wanna hear it go on its own. It's not gonna happen, is it? Yeah, let me let it rest again. I keep saying one more time, I can't help it guys. I can't help it, I got faith that this old girl can do it. Come on, yeah. Come on. Oh, oh she ran. All 
I think she's had about enough, guys. <laughs> oh, come on! She's running. Oh, she was running. She was running. Okay. Guys, I think we're gonna have to stop. There it is, running on her own. She was, she was. Come on. Come on, baby, come on. Starter gave out. Oh man, really, this is the last time, guys. Last time. Oh wow. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. There we go. There we go. There we go. Yeah. crap she's running on her own unbelievable listen to her yeah yeah there you go old girl there you go that's it that's it right there Oh, oh. Boy, she's really running now. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's gonna be about it, man. We got a lot done today. It is late, it's 10 o'clock at night. I have an hour's drive to get home. I did one other thing off camera and that was I tried to fill it up with water, distilled water, of course, and that didn't go over very well. well it went all over my floor very well because the drain cock was left open, so I lost it all. I closed it, and it appears to be holding water just fine. Now, I also noticed the fan belt had slipped off. I reinstalled the fan belt, so that is back on again. She's come a long way from 10 plus years of sitting in a garage covered in dust and dirt, not running. You got to hear her breathe her first breaths in over a decade. I don't know about you, but to me, that is a big deal. That is super impressive. Now, I know there's going to be a lot of you that want me to go all the way and let's restore the car back to brand new. I can't do it, guys. I can't do it. I paid way too much for this car. I bought it sight unseen, and I had no idea how rough it really was. Now, with that said, I don't regret purchasing it at all, and I don't regret the price. I paid $5,500 for this, and while it may have been well over what I should have paid for it, the car has a great story to tell. It really does. The family has had this car for over 67 years. It was purchased the day, the day she had been born. Her mom was in the hospital, and dad went out and bought a car because we're men and that's what we do props to him all right most of us would have had our nads cut off for doing such a thing and she wasn't happy about it but the car is still here which means eventually she had to have come around and accepted it what a story to tell the fact that it was in a movie not a car like this but this very car was in a movie i posted a clip toward the beginning of the video If you 
you want to actually click on the link, it's on YouTube. The movie itself is on YouTube. This car pops up in the beginning, probably within the first 15 seconds. You have to really look for it, but it's there, and I will include the link down below, along with the link to Santa's workshop. He went out and spent the entire day helping me load and unload this thing. His leg got to hurting again, and he needed to go home and rest, and he has an MRI tomorrow. So the fact that he came out to help me with this thing in the heat when he's supposed to be going to the doctor tomorrow, he's such a good friend. So Michael, thank you so much. I hope you guys go over there, check out his channel, and subscribe. Click on one of his videos and let him know that Randy sent you. Also, Monkey Wrench Mike came out today. He helped as well. Thank you to Monkey Wrench Mike. His link will be down below as well. Another great friend that's always here to help out. The car is amazing. I love it. I love the character. I truly do. I know that's something people say when they just don't want to spend the money to fix it up, but I'm being dead serious. I just love that it's all kind of, it's kind of beat up. I mean, it's kind of beat up and I love it. If we really wanted to get it back on the road to be able to use it, we would need to get tires and tubes and repack the bearings and check the fluids, of course, and the windshield, and there's a lot. The fuel system probably needs to be completely replaced. I don't really know how this little carburetor down here works, but it's teeny tiny. I, I, it's gotta be the most simplistic carburetor on the face of the earth, it has to be. It has to. I've seen lawnmower carburetors that look more complicated than that. But that probably needs to be gone through. The fuel tank probably needs to be gone through. The fuel lines need to be gone through. And I still don't know how to work the lights. I would love to get the lights to turn on, but I have no idea how they work. I've been trying to look it up online, and I just can't find it. So anyway, with that, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed getting my hands dirty and bringing it to you. This is an icon, <coughs> excuse me, this is an iconic vehicle. You're looking at one of the very first cars in America that was mass produced. I mean, granted, I think they came out in like 1908 or 1909. So by 1925, I'm sure they had a lot of cars on the road. But how many of these are still out and about today? How many of these have survived? I don't know. I don't know, but I have one, and I was able to share the experience of buying it and bringing it from a barn somewhat back to life. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, do me a favor and hit the thumbs up button. Let me know you liked it and share the video with your friends if you think they'd like to see an old Model T being brought back from the dead, breathing its first breaths of life in over a decade. I've sent the video to the people I bought it from, and they were so happy to see that we got it running. I'm happy as well. So like I said, hit the thumbs up button, share the video with your friends, and if you haven't subscribed to the channel, hey, consider hitting that subscribe button. I've got more videos to come. You might remember the Citation. If not, well, this is a 1984 Chevrolet Citation that I bought for honestly nothing. I think it was 200 and something dollars. It was non-running. It's a biohazard, and I got it running the same day, which is really cool because I got this running the same day as well. So we're on a roll right now. Hopefully it stays that way. I have ordered a new steering column for this, the entire steering column, brown to match, was 65 bucks. Shipping was $50. Also, I got new hubcaps, well, used hubcaps, off of another Citation, all four of them. So it will have nice matching hubcaps. And I got three out of the four filler panels for these giant gaping holes back here. So that's coming too. Hopefully, we can get all that stuff done. That's why it's on the lift, because we got to pull the column out. I think we'll be taking this one on a test drive before too long, guys. I just won five more cars today. So stay tuned. There's, there's more cars than I have enough hours in the day to get things done. But this one right here is the crown jewel, in my opinion. Stay safe out there, everybody. I look forward to seeing you all again very soon in the next one.